Hi there, when you're working in the Fairlight page, you can use compression to help control the volume level, but sometimes you need a more human, hands-on approach to massage the levels to get things sounding how you want. That's where Fairlight Automation comes in. Fairlight Automation is essentially the programming of different parameters so they change as the video plays back. Some of the parameters that you can set automation for include volume, panning, and even EQ controls. There's two main ways to set automation for these parameters. The first is to draw the automation using the drawing tools in Fairlight and the second is to actually record the automation in real time as the timeline plays back. In this video we're looking at automation at the entire track level but you can automate things at the individual clip level as well. Let's head into DaVinci Resolve and you can see I've got this single track here in this timeline. This is just a clip of me talking. If it's not already enabled the first thing you need to do is click this button to toggle automation on. When you click it it turns red. We get this extra icon here and down here telling us that we can work with automation. Now if we expand this track one down and check out this drop down, this drop down has appeared and it lets us choose what parameter we want to automate. In this demo we're going to be automating the fader level or the volume for the entire track. Once we change this to a value other than none, we're now in track editing automation mode as opposed to clip editing automation mode. That essentially means that we're not trying to adjust individual clips now, we're working with things at a higher level at the entire track level so the automation can span multiple clips. If you want to switch back to clip editing mode you can change this to none or toggle off automation. Because we're now in track automation editing mode, we can't change the individual volume for this individual clip. You can see that the line that we normally get for clip volume is no longer there. This line is affecting the track volume. And as I move this line up and down, watch what's happening down here in the channel fader. It's matching this line. Let's just start off with this set to zero. So currently there's no automation set for this fader level. It's gray and it's the same level all the way across the track. So let's see how we can actually set some automation for this fader level track level volume by drawing automation using some of the tools. The simplest way is to make sure you're in pointer mode here by clicking this or hitting A on the keyboard. And there you can introduce keyframes into this automation for the fader level. To add a keyframe, hold down Alt or Option on a Mac and then click this fader level curve. You can see we've got this little plus icon. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add three keyframes here. We'll just zoom in so we can see these keyframes. The gray line has switched to green, telling us that we've got automation now enabled for this parameter. And you can see down here, the fader has also turned green, telling us that this parameter is now being automated. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this middle keyframe and we're just gonna bring it up. If I scroll the playhead now, as I'm scrolling into this automation, watch what's happening down here. The fader level is actually going up to this point and then coming back down. We've essentially drawn automation and this will happen in real time when we play back the video. Just watch what happens down here. You can see the fader is going up in line with this automation line. You can delete individual keyframes for this automation by holding down Control and Alt on Windows and then clicking it. This would be Command Option Click on Mac. One of the ways to delete multiple keyframes is clicking on this focus mode here, dragging over the keyframes and then hitting backspace on the keyboard. Those two keyframes have disappeared and notice this line has turned back to gray indicating that we no longer have any automation for the fader level. You can also use this focus mode to add keyframes, for example, to make a section louder. This kind of editing is going to make this section louder. Just drag up this line and if I scroll through this, when we hit this point, notice the fader will jump straight up to the new value. This will be a quick change in volume so it might be quite noticeable. If you want to make it more gentle, click on the pointer mode and then drag these keyframes to make a more gentle slope. This will change the fader volume over time rather than snapping to a new value. When you're changing values, I'm just holding down the left mouse button here, watch what happens when I move this up and down. It's telling us the absolute value for the new parameter, here 3.7 decibels, but it's also telling us the difference from the previous value. Here it's telling us that we've lowered it by 1.7. If you're moving these keyframes around, they'll move quite quickly, but if you hold down shift while you're moving the mouse, you get more fine grain control and things move more slowly and more gradually. A more freeform way of drawing automation is to click this pencil tool here and then just draw the changes that you want. Perhaps we want this bit to go louder and this bit to be quieter and then louder again and then quiet and then loud. You can see now the pencil has drawn all of these keyframes and once again as we scroll through this, check out the fader. It's moving 
in line with these keyframes. Elevating your audio and really making it shine will give you a massive advantage over other editors in DaVinci Resolve. Click the first link in this video's description or scan this QR code to learn more about my Fairlight course. So let's go and delete all of these keyframes. Once again, we'll come back to focus mode. We'll drag across all of these and then hit backspace. It's not just volume that you can automate by drawing parameters. For example, you could automate the threshold for a compressor. To do this, I'm going to change this to compressor and threshold. I'm going to open up the compressor for this track, turn on the compressor, and then we're going to use the pen tool once again, and we'll just draw some changes in the compressor's threshold. You can see we've got this green light, meaning we've got automation now for the threshold parameter. And as I scroll across here, you can see the threshold knob changing in real time as we scroll through or play through the timeline. Drawing automation keyframes like this is just one way to set automation parameters. It's a more mechanical way and it means you have to keep playing back each section to check the automation that you've added. There is however a more interactive way where you can play back the timeline and then adjust parameters in real time as you're listening to get a more human feeling for what's changing. And that's exactly what you'll learn about in this next video. I'm Jason Roberts, please subscribe and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.